Let's look at the planned maintenance you'll complete every 1,000 service hours. Required service varies by machine, but here's what to expect for a CAT 299D3 compact track loader. Before you get started though, check your operation and maintenance manual for proper safety procedures and always wear appropriate personal protective equipment. First, move your machine to a dry level surface. Remove the bucket and raise the lift arms, locking them in place. Put your machine in park, lower implements to the ground, and lock out the hydraulics. Walk around your machine to look for any leaks, rust, or other damage. For all maintenance, you can order everything you need at parts.cat.com. Enter your machine's serial number to see which parts you need for your machine. This is also where you can find the self-service options for your equipment. SSOs provide detailed service instructions and recommended parts and tooling. Now, let's go through how to complete your 1,000-hour planned maintenance, also known as PM3. First, take your SOS services samples. Start your engine and take the hydraulic oil sample from the port on the cooling fan. Turn off the engine and then take the engine and coolant samples. Be sure to fill out the labels for your samples before sending them to the lab. To change your engine oil, find the crankcase drain on the bottom of the oil pan. Remove the panel and the plug and drain the oil into a suitable container. Once drained, reinstall the plug and panel and remove the engine oil filter with a filter wrench. Apply a thin film of new oil to the O-ring and install the new filter. Use the instructions and index marks on the filter for reference. Then remove the fill cap and fill your engine with new oil. Check for leaks after the engine has warmed up and inspect the used filter for excess debris. It's time to replace the hydraulic oil filter. Remove the drain plug from the bottom of the housing and drain the oil into a suitable container. Once it's drained, unscrew the housing from the mounting base. Squeeze the tabs on the filter to unlatch it from the housing. Inspect the O-rings on the housing and base and replace them if needed. Now, wipe out the base and housing with a clean lint-free cloth. Insert the new filter into the canister, making sure the two tabs latch. Apply a thin coat of new oil to all the O-rings. Reinstall the housing into the base and put the drain plug back in. Now you can inspect the O-ring on the hydraulic oil fill cap and replace it if necessary. To inspect the engine belt, open the back compartment, loosen the fasteners, and remove the guard. Inspect the belt for signs of damage, such as cracking. Adjust the belt if the tension is off. Your OMM lists the proper measurement between the alternator pulley and crankshaft pulley. If it needs to be replaced, loosen the mounting and adjusting bolts and decrease the belt tension. Remove the belt and then install a new one, making sure it is fully seated on the pulleys. Move the alternator until the correct tension is reached. You can find steps for checking belt tension in the alternator SSO instructions. Retighten the adjusting and mounting bolts and reinstall the guard. And repeat this process if your equipment has an air conditioning belt. The engine air filter housing is on the top right of this compartment. Wipe down the cover before unlatching and removing it. Remove the primary filter and wipe the housing back to front with a lint-free cloth to clean it. And now, if it's time to replace the secondary filter, remove it. Do not clean the housing at this point because you could push dirt toward the air inlet opening. Install new secondary and primary filters and then clean the inside of the cover and install it. A qualified technician should check the engine valve lash, so contact your cat dealer for this service. To replace the primary fuel filter, disconnect the water and fuel sensor. Open the drain valve and drain the water and fuel via a drain hose inserted into a suitable container. Close the drain valve and remove the water bowl from the filter. Clean the mounting base, lubricate the seal with clean fuel, and install the new filter. Reinstall the bowl and fuel filter and reconnect the sensor plug. Finally, refer to your OMM for instructions on how to prime the fuel system. Now, to replace the fresh air cabin filter, go to the back left side of the cap. Rotate the latch to free the cover, replace the filter, and put the cover back on. And behind the seat in the cab, you'll find the recirculating air cabin filter. Turn the thumb screws and remove the cover. If the filter is dirty or its seal is damaged, replace it and then reinstall the cover. To change the final drive oil, first position one final drive so the drain plug is at the bottom. Remove the plugs and drain the oil into a suitable container. Check the oil for metal chips or particles as you dispose of it according to regulations. 
Clean and inspect the plug O-rings and replace them if worn or damaged. Reposition your equipment so that you can refill the drive. Add oil so that it reaches the bottom of the fill opening and reinstall the fill plug. Repeat the steps on the other final drive. Now, lift the cab to check all hoses for cracking or softness. Tighten loose clamps and replace any that are missing. Replace any damaged hoses, always using new clamps with new hoses. The hydraulic tank breather is also under the cab near the hydraulic oil fill. Replace the breather and then lower the cab back into operating position. Your final task is inspecting and adjusting your rubber tracks. To check tension, lift one track 50 millimeters or two inches off the ground. Measure the sag from the middle roller and check whether that value is in range in your OMM. If the tension needs to be adjusted, open the panel on the undercarriage. To relax tension, release some grease from the fitting. To tighten tension, pump grease into the fitting. Make sure all bolts are tight and in good condition and repeat these steps on the other track. For more information and support, contact your cat dealer and always check your operation and maintenance manual for specific instruction and safety procedures.